Turning back to Capitol Hill now, where less than two hours ago, the Senate passed a huge $1.9 trillion budget bill. Vice President Kamala Harris cast the tie-breaking vote. Now, the bill now moves on to the House, where a vote is expected today. And Chris Van Cleve has been tracking everything that's been going on uh, inside the Capitol. Chris, the House had a big vote last night, too, one involving controversial Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, we saw 11 Republicans join with Democrats. That's one more Republican in the House that voted, uh, then voted to impeach then president, uh, former President Donald Trump uh, last month. Uh, so you, you still had a, a fairly strong Republican backing for Congresswoman Green, but uh, several Republicans, including three from South Florida, moving to remove her from her committees, both the Budget and the Education Committee. And the South Florida vote may be because she has called the Parkland shooting a false flag. It still leaves a uh, you know, a Republican Party that is, is looking to find its way in the post-Trump era. The yeas are 230 and the nays are 199. The resolution is adopted. In a mostly party line vote, the House stripped Georgia Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene from her committee assignments. I will be protecting freedom of speech. Greene, who previously spread hateful and violent conspiracy theories, and Mrs. Green. tried Thursday to walk back her controversial comments. See, school shootings are absolutely real. I also want to tell you 9 11 absolutely happened. I remember that day crying all day long watching it on the news. But for Democrats, it was too little, too late. We are dealing with conduct that brings shame on this House. This is not about party. It's about whether or not you will vote for decency and truth. While many Republicans disavowed her comments, they argued the opposition removing a member from committees could now be on the table when Republicans take power. Everyone has said things they wish they didn't say. Everyone has done things they wish they didn't do. So who's next? Following the vote, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez took to the floor for an hour with fellow lawmakers to share personal accounts from the Capitol siege. 29 days ago, the glass in and around this very chamber was shattered by gunshots, clubs, by individuals seeking to restrain and murder members of Congress duly elected to carry out the duties of their office. Sure, Michigan's Rashida Tlaib broke down in tears while describing how she fears so for her staff's safety. And I worry every day for their lives because of this rhetoric. I never thought that they would feel unsafe here. Also going on uh, yesterday was kind of a surprise by uh, House Democrat impeachment managers who uh, sent a letter to former President Trump uh, requesting that he agree to testify under oath as part of his Senate impeachment trial, which gets underway next week. The president's lawyers called that a public relations stunt, said the former president will not be testifying. Democrats say they may use that as part of their case as a sign former President Trump has not taken responsibility. Anne-Marie. So, Chris, listen, there is a lot to get to. We're going to start with Congresswoman Green. Uh, she spoke. She sort of tried to distance her, herself from um, the words that and other things that she's been accused of saying. Um, but it didn't seem like her retraction impressed many Democrats. Why not? Well, I don't think uh, anyone heard the words, I'm sorry. Uh, it was, it was, uh, it was not the apology, a full-throated apology, perhaps, that, that Democrats were hoping to hear. And, uh, and frankly, this uh, controversy has been swirling around Congresswoman Green for a couple of weeks up here on the Hill. And she has been uh, defiant, certainly on social media. Her, her tone has been she doesn't owe anyone an apology uh, and that she wasn't going to back down. So uh, what she said on the House floor is different than what she has been communicating on social media. Uh, and for, for Democrats, uh, it just was a non-starter. Yeah, and she said something to the effect of she was made to believe certain things, which I, which I thought was really sort of curious phrasing. I don't know how someone makes you believe something. Um, but I'm sure we're going to keep talking about that throughout the day. Uh, there have been attempts 
by Republicans, though, to sort of compare Green to Democratic Congresswoman Ilham Omar. Uh, Omar has made some controversial statements as well, but, uh, but controversial and conspiratorial are, are definitely two different things. Do Republicans view this vote as precedent-setting, and might they take actions against the Democrats should, say, power shift after the midterm elections? Uh, it is precedent setting. It, it is really the first time you have seen the majority party go to the floor and strip a member of the other party, the minority party, from their committee ships. Uh, typically, that would be up to the leader of that party to decide. And the Republicans have removed members of Congress from committees in the past. Steve King from Iowa was removed from his committees after he questioned uh, when the term white supremacist became uh, a bad thing. And, and, and ultimately uh, factored into him losing his seat. So it, it has happened. The difference here, uh, you, you have the majority party removing a minority party member from a committee. So yeah, the Republicans could use that. And they have certainly said, uh, you know, this, this presents the possibility then that this becomes part of the, the politics in the House, uh, which a number of Republicans said they were voting no on this particular resolution, not because they supported Green's statements, but because they didn't want that precedent set. Uh, whether or not uh, that's a talking point or reality, uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, for when the Republicans are in the majority. Uh, Speaker Pelosi uh, made the distinction between what some of her members have, have said uh, and, and, and the situation with Green saying that uh, she would remove any member in the Democratic Party from their committees if they threatened violence against another member uh, before the, the Congress would need to act, that she would just do that. And the distinction Democrats are making here is that some of Green's rhetoric before getting elected appeared to support uh, executing prominent Democrats, including Speaker Nancy Pelosi. You factor in the, the attack on the Capitol and the combination of that, uh, the Speaker feels is just different than a any of the, the comments that have been made by some of the members of, of her party. Um, before we let you go, I've got to ask you about this massive uh, budget bill that was just passed. Um, what happens next? What will it mean for the American taxpayer? It's pretty hefty, almost $2 trillion. So I think it's important to note that the, what was passed today is really just the framework that allows the Congress to pass a budget, pass this COVID relief bill. So this passing uh, doesn't really do anything immediately for the American people. They did not pass the COVID relief bill last night. They, they passed the, the framework or the foundation upon which they can build the, the legislation being proposed by the White House and, and congressional Democrats. Uh, and that will happen over the next several weeks. Uh, what, what this measure does is it allows them to pass COVID relief uh, in the form of a budget bill with a simple majority. The 50 Democrats plus the vice president will get that done. So uh, last night's 15-hour votorama that the Senate did, all of this uh, really just was to pass the framework to then eventually in a few weeks perhaps pass the COVID relief bill. Does that make sense? It's kind of complicated okay. and wonky. Yeah, it totally, no. <laughs> well, but when you explain it, it's crystal clear. Chris, uh, thank you very much. Sure thing. And later today, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene will hold her first press conference after being voted off House committees yesterday. You can watch that live on CBSN at 11 a.m. Eastern.